What is up from Namaste Ram Ram Ji. I'm going to react to Babarik, one who could finish Mahabharat war in one minute. How crazy is that? I mean, how crazy is that? that was one of the most craziest um you know just war that happened man you know there's Mahabharat and this ramayan right so one minute i mean i would love to check this out man tell me what you think in the comments in down below and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe let's go and uh shout out to the hindu saga for making this video um, i appreciate the story it. of barbaric is a folk tale that is a part of many regional versions of Mahabharat, but not the original Mahabharat written by Maharshi Vedavyas. As per the Skanda Puran, Barbarik was the grandson of Bhim and the son of Ghatotkach and Moravi, the daughter of Daitya Moor. He was more powerful than the combined powers of Arjun, Karna, Bhishma, Dronacharya, and many other warriors what? of the Kurukshetra war. Having learned the art of warfare from his mother, Barbarik also was blessed with three divine infallible arrows gifted to him by Lord Shiva himself. Wow. It is said that Barbarik was so powerful that according to him, the war of Mahabharata could end in one minute if he alone was to fight in it. Before the Mahabharata war began, Lord Krishna asked all the warriors how many days it would take to finish the Mahabharata war alone. Bhishma answered that he would take 20 days to finish the war. Dronacharya replied that it would take him 25 days. When Karna was asked, he said he would take 24 days. Okay. Arjun told Krishna it would take him 28 days to complete the battle by himself. In this manner, Lord Krishna asked each warrior and was receiving an answer. When Barbarik learned that the battle between the Pandavas and the Kauravas had become inevitable, he wanted to witness what was to be the Mahabharata war. His mother agreed to let him go watch the war, but asked him before leaving as to which side would he join if he felt the urge to take part in the war. He promised his mother that if he felt the urge to participate in the battle, he would join the side which would be losing. Oh. He rode to the field on his chariot, equipped with only three arrows and a bow. Krishna, having heard of Barbarik's willingness to fight and wanting to examine Barbarik's strength, disguised himself as a Brahmin and came in front of Barbarik. Krishna asked him the same question about how many days would it take for him to finish the war if he were to fight it alone. Barbarik replied it would take him only one minute to finish the whole battle if he was to fight alone. Bro. Krishna was surprised at this answer of Barbarik, that is huge. considering the fact that Barbarik was walking towards the battlefield with only three arrows. To this Barbarik replied that a single arrow of his was enough to destroy all his opponents in the war, and after killing its targets, it would then return to his quiver. Ooh. Barbarik explained the power of the three arrows. The first arrow would mark all the objects that Barbarik wanted to be destroyed. The second arrow would mark all the objects that Barbarik wanted to be saved. The third arrow would destroy all the objects marked by the first arrow or destroy all the objects not marked by the second Amazing. arrow. Amazing. Krishna, eager to test this out, asked Barbarik to tie all the leaves of the tree that he was standing under using one of his arrows. Barbarik accepted the challenge and began meditating to release his arrow by closing his eyes. As Barbarik started meditating, Krishna quietly plucked a leaf from the tree and hid it under his foot without Barbarik's knowledge. When Barbarik released his first arrow, it marked all the leaves of the tree and finally started hovering around the leg of Krishna. Krishna asks Barbarik why was the arrow hovering around wow. his foot. Barbarik replied that there must be a leaf under his foot and the arrow was targeting his foot to mark the leaf that was hidden underneath. Barbarik advised Krishna to lift his leg, otherwise the arrow would mark the leaf by piercing through Krishna's foot. Wow. Krishna then lifted his foot and the first arrow also marked the hidden leaf. The third arrow then collected all the leaves including the hidden leaf and tied them together. By this, Krishna concluded 
that the arrows were so powerful and impalable that even if Barbarik was unaware about the whereabouts of his enemies, his arrows would still navigate and trace his intended right. targets. That is huge. This situation scared Lord Krishna. He also realized that in the real battlefield, in case Krishna wanted to isolate the Pandavas to save them from Barbarik's attack, then he would not be able to do so, because even without the knowledge of Barbarik, the arrow would go ahead and destroy the target if Barbarik intended exactly. to. Exactly. Thus, Krishna gets a deeper insight into Barbarik's phenomenal power. Krishna then asked Barbarik about which side he was planning to fight for in the war of Mahabharat. Barbarik explained that since the Kaurava army was bigger than the Pandava army and because of the condition he had agreed to with his mother, he would fight for the weaker side, which was the Pandavas. But to this, Lord Krishna explained the paradox of the situation. Krishna explained that since he was the greatest warrior on the battlefield, whichever side he joins would make the other side weaker. So eventually, he would end up oscillating between the two sides and destroy everyone except oh, himself. Right. Thus, Krishna revealed the actual consequence of the word that he had given to his mother. Krishna then explained to him that before a battle, the head of the bravest Kshatriya needed to be sacrificed in order to worship or sanctify the battlefield. Krishna said that he considered Barbarik to be the bravest among the Kshatriyas and hence was asking for his head in charity. In fulfillment of his promise and in compliance with Krishna's command, wow. Barbari gave his head to him in charity. Before actually giving his head, Barbarik expressed his desire to see the forthcoming battle. To this, Krishna agreed to place Barbarik's head on top of the mountain that overlooked the battlefield. At the end of the war, the Pandavas argued amongst themselves about whose was the greatest contribution to their victory. To this, Krishna suggested that Barbarik's head should be allowed to judge this since it had watched the entire war. Barbarik's head suggested that it was Krishna alone who was responsible for the victory of the Pandavas in the war. His advice, his strategy and his presence was crucial in the victory. Okay, um, this was really interesting to react to. This guy was really strong, man. This guy was strong, like crazily strong. You're telling me these arrows had their own knowledge. They had their own technology let me say bro like they would just him thinking about okay i want to destroy let me say um i want to destroy all uh people of this country right even though he doesn't know where they are the arrow would just go and take all of them of that particular country even though you're hiding anyone bro they would go and take and then the third one would come and destroy attack and destroy all of them and honestly, he would do that in one minute. That is true. That is true. And now the, the craziest part is the last part where he had to sacrifice his own head. Um, does that mean that he, he just like literally sacrificed his life, you know? Because I don't know if, uh, if they removed the head and then you're still going to be uh, alive or something like that. But that was amazingly done. You know that was really amazingly done i was just looking at it like wow you know i mean even the way that he was exp he this whole issue was explained uh, by krishna that you know if you go to this side because you are the strongest at that moment this side is weaker and also i don't know man like what was he actually thinking when he said this to his mother because clearly as one of the strongest and you know i can defeat them in one minute then if you go this side, obviously this is going to be weaker. And if you go this side, it's going to be weaker. So you go there, you destroy these ones. You go there, you destroy. And then at the end of the day, like what Krishna said, you'll be the only one standing. I mean, he had to give up his head and all that as a sacrifice. But um, interesting. I, I mean, interesting 100%, man. Much love to you guys. I appreciate you all. If you haven't subscribed, I mean, they'll give you this time to just go and subscribe. This is just a simple blessing that you are offering to me and i really appreciate that you know take good care of yourselves and i will see you next time namaste